right now, I want to welcome to the show our friend Rick Ector of Rick's Farm Academy of Detroit. Rick, how you doing, sir? Hey, Cam. I'm doing great, man. How are you and the guys? We are excellent. Appreciate uh, you coming on the program this afternoon. And uh, you're actually quoted in a, a story at The Guardian, which is uh, a, it's a very far left-leaning uh, news site uh, 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 published uh, out in uh, England. Uh, the headline, police tell Detroiters to buy guns in city riven by race issues and crime. City police chief has encouraged residents to arm themselves as stark racial disparities in shoot first laws become clear. So that's the that's the tone there of the uh, the headline. But I you know I, I got to say, Rick, the the article itself is not awful. It, it's not awful per se. I mean, I I really have <laughs> issue with with the story itself based on the fact that you know the way it was sold to me. You know, uh, last weekend, you know, I was doing my annual community service event and. Uh, You know, it started out kind of small two years ago where I I trained 50 ladies for free, you know, at a local gun range that donated their facility, you know, free instruction, range time, ammo, gun rental, the whole thing. And uh, this year it got to be a a much bigger deal. You know, I had over 200 ladies that received a free shooting lesson. So I got a call out of Washington, D.C., well, at least the number, you know, area code 202. And she said she had heard about my program and that she wanted to come out and and see what was going on and and talk to some of the ladies that was there. So I was really under the impression that it was an article about our big community service event. I had no idea it was going to be, you know, this far-reaching, you know, article that was going to, you know, take a shot at at concealed carry and and caring for, you know, personal protection and and because— you know, the story about the police chief was uh, kind of stale by now. Everyone in the country pretty much well knows uh, that the police chief supports law-abiding citizens carrying guns for personal protection. So when I saw that little piece where she quoted that researcher whose conclusions was that, you know, that black people don't really uh, fare too well with stand-your-ground laws, I was really disappointed. But you know, as I talked with a couple of my friends, they were like, well, hey, what did you expect to talk to the Guardian? You know, you should have expected, you know, <laughs> something a, a little unforward to, to come out of it. But, uh, you know, like you said, the article wasn't awful per se, but, you know, I just think I'll be a little more selective with what news organizations I talk to in the future. Well, yeah, and like I said, I you know, I thought there was um... – there, 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 there were some good parts of this uh, of this story, as you say. The, you know, the people who wrote this story uh, or, or the, uh, the the website. I don't, I don't know the author's name. Um, you know, look, they're they're anti gun. They don't, they don't, they think what you're doing is weird. They think what you're doing is uh, kind of awful. But you know, they still uh, allowed some stories to be told. Um, I, I thought it was interesting uh, the the story of Tanisha Moner, uh, yeah. 37 years old, when she was 17, she was raped, she was robbed at gunpoint. At a payphone in Detroit four years later, the Guardian writes, uh, when she's 21, she was attending Wayne State University, working as a manager at a Burger King. She's counting money in the Burger King office, um, and she's robbed again at gunpoint, left in the, uh, the, the, the restaurant's freezer. And for a long time, she said that, that she was terrified of firearms. And then two years ago, she said, finally, two years ago, I said, I'm either going to let my fear overcome me or I'm going to beat my fear. So I got my concealed uh, carry license in the event that something else should ever happen. Like to me, I thought that's a that's a, a great story, and it, it really yeah, humanizes yeah. the her fact story, that you know yeah. these are real people who yeah, are who are. Is, uh, is, is uh, a real uh, story. Uh, I didn't know about the rape until the article that came out, but I, I do remember her taking my concealed carry class a couple of years ago, and uh, I mean she's an excellent shooter now. She regularly posts her silhouettes on Facebook, and they're, and they're awesome and. Uh, she recently took my range safety officer class, and now she's an NRA RSO, and she has aspirations to be an instructor. So I mean, she's really came, you know, you know, from from surviving a violent attack to uh, owning her personal protection and wanting to help other people. That is amazing, you know, and and your story as well, Rick. Um, you know, we we talk a lot about what you are doing to to train people and to. Uh, you know, be safe and responsible around firearms. You know how to protect yourself. But you, you too, uh, were very, as the Guardian says, were ambivalent uh, about firearms. You were not a a gun person until 
uh, you were carjacked in your driveway. Yeah, man. You know, I, I wasn't anti-gun. I was just, you know, like you said, ambivalent. I really had, you know, to me, it never was something I really needed to be concerned with. You know, a family guy, you know, lived in a decent neighborhood, uh, didn't hang out at night, went to work and came home. But, uh, you know, circumstances happened that uh, I had a rude awakening. Fortunately for me, I survived. And uh, I wanted to, you know, completely own my personal protection. And, uh, you know, now I'm a uh, firearms instructor, training counselor, you know, out giving free uh, shooting lessons to women in the community. So, uh, yeah, it, it's funny how life goes sometimes. No kidding. Um, and, and, you know, look, in Detroit, Seems to me like we're gonna find that these stories are, are 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 pretty common. Um, you know, people who may not have thought about firearms may have been anti-gun, but when you are the victim of a crime, when all of a sudden it's very very personal, it's not a hypothetical for you, uh, and you're in that situation. You know, it's not just Detroit. I mean, I remember in in Cleveland there was a state lawmaker who had voted against right to carry when it was up in Colorado the, uh, the the first year. And a few years after that, he's going on his nightly walk around his neighborhood, and he's robbed right outside of his house. And, and he said, the light went on at that moment. I realized I want a gun to be able to protect myself. And he started, he, he, he not only did he get his concealed carry uh, license, but he uh, talked to uh, people in his neighborhood, and they sent a whole bunch of people from the neighborhood to get their concealed carry licenses. This, you know, look, it is, self-defense is a right. It may not be something that we all think about, but just because we're not exercising it doesn't mean that we don't have the right to do so, that we don't have the right to say, all right, now it's, yep, I've decided. I do want to exercise that right. You know, I, I concur 100%, man. You know, the right to, to self-defense you know, it could also translate into the right not to protect yourself. But you know what? If, if for whatever reason not protecting yourself or not having a means of, of defending yourself, you know, doesn't make sense to you, then, you know, fine, great, don't do it. But at least don't stand in the way of other people who are in different situations and different circumstances who have a desire to protect themselves and their families. And, and you know, for some of us, you know, it takes, unfortunately, having a negative event to uh, – to show you that it's relevant and that it could be of some use to you to be safe in our society. You know, there's a uh, there, there's a quote um, in this piece. A, uh, a a gentleman last name of Roman um, who said that he, he he quote he I think it's a disaster. He says, "How do you grow a city?" When you say to people who are thinking about moving there, when you move here, bring a weapon. Who's gonna want to move there? He says. So uh, let me let me ask you, Rick. Um, first of all, a do you think that people who live in Detroit uh, should own firearms if 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 they want if they want to? Yeah, absolutely. If if you want a gun, you should be able to have one. I have no uh, argument there. Uh, John Roman is a, a senior fellow at the Urban Institute. Um, he says, you know, who, who's going to want to move here if, uh, if, if the thinking is, well, when you move here, bring a weapon. It, it seems to me that, uh, Rick, that, that's, kind of, uh, that's kind of insulting, you know, that if you if, – it's all your fault, Rick, why people don't want to move here, that if you simply – and Chief Craig, if you guys would just stop talking about, you know, the need to protect yourself, then more people would move to Detroit uh, because they would be unaware of the fact that crime is bad and that, uh, you know, people – do need firearms to protect themselves, and uh, many people are are choosing to take that uh, that option. I, I I think most people who would be moving to Detroit are well aware of the problems that Detroit's facing right now. I mean, yeah, we definitely have our problems. We definitely have our challenges, and, and yeah, you know what? The city is not one hundred percent safe, but then again, no place in the country is one hundred percent safe. Uh, you know, if you want to carry a firearm for personal protection, by all means, you should be able to do that. But I think it's disingenuous for certain people to assume that good people with guns is the reason why we have violent crime, you know, in our society and in our city. You know, I agree with you 100% there. So I guess one final question. I mean, what if, what if the people who are moving to Detroit right now, Rick, uh, and you'd be in a better position to, to judge this than me. But what if the people who are moving to Detroit, the people who, who are, you know, maybe returning home, 
uh, or they recognize that there are opportunities. They want to see Detroit um, uh, turn around. What if they're the type of people who are okay with owning firearms for for self defense? I mean, what if what if that's the type of people that that Detroit is attracting? Uh, you know, uh, folks who who understand that the police can't be everywhere at one time. There are you know tens of millions of uh, people all across the United States who 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 know this. Um, are those the type of folks who are who are more likely to move to Detroit? Maybe more self sufficient uh, folks who who see opportunity in your city. I certainly hope so. You know, I'm not going to uh, not welcome anyone who doesn't own a gun, but you know what? If, if you're a good citizen and you happen to be a homeowner and you have guns, man, I want you to live next door to me. I want you in my neighborhood, and I want you in my community. You know, the fact that, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with good people owning firearms. And I welcome them into the city, and I welcome them into our community. Yeah, I, I just remember a story I read. I think it was I think it was last year. It was probably about a year ago, and it was one of those you know first person uh, reporting stories. And it was a young guy who had bought uh, a house in Detroit. I think he bought it for a buck at auction. Maybe it was like five hundred dollars, but it was one of these houses that uh, you know the the city is selling off uh, dirt cheap. And he bought it, and he decided he wanted to move in and start renovating it so he could live there. And within probably two or three weeks, he had also bought a shotgun for self-defense. And this was something he didn't re- he had not really thought about, but he realized pretty quickly, yep, I do need to be able to protect myself. <laughs> and, you know, there were no regrets. There was no uh, existential angst. There was no hand-wringing over this. It was just his decision. He had, he had decided, yeah, I'm not a gun owner, never have been a gun owner, but, but I want to be able to protect myself, and here I am uh, owning a shotgun. I, I just I wonder if we're not seeing more of those types of people. Uh, I think it does take, you know, I think it takes a special type of person to to look at a, a house that's fallen apart, maybe in a neighborhood that uh, is 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 running down, and to see the potential, to to see um, what can what 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 you can make of of that house and how you can restore and rebuild. I think it takes somebody with imagination. I think it takes somebody with uh, perseverance, and I think it takes somebody who's Again, who's got that 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 spark of self sufficiency, and I just think those are character traits that lend themselves well to gun ownership as well. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, the city right now it, it's definitely at a low point, but you know what? It can't get much worse than it is right now. And and when you look at some of the neighborhoods and some of the communities, I mean, literally there are some blocks where there's only one or two homes on a block in, in some areas. And you know what? Let's face it. There's some places that that have their challenges crime-wise, and you know may not have the best of response time. And you know what? We need some people to come into the city who want to uh, take up residency and become positive uh, citizens in the city. And, and you know what? It might uh, take those people to have a little more ownership of their personal safety. You know, by all means, those are the type of people I personally would like to see come in the city. Rick, listen, man, I'm glad you're there, uh, and I think Detroit is lucky to have you. I appreciate you coming on the program, and uh, I look forward to doing this again soon, man. Hey, man, it's always a pleasure. Love being on the show. Give uh, Cam, Pop, and Eric my best. I certainly will. Rick Hector joins from Rick's Fire Academy of Detroit.